today I learned that I could do 10 consecutive pull-ups and today you're going to learn what the difference is between the knowledge hub, the notes area and the resources section is. Previously I left a template for people who wanted to set up their own personal knowledge management system using PARA which is a framework developed by Tiago Forte which stands for Projects, Areas, Resources and Archive. I left in that template two other databases. One was the Knowledge Hub and one was the Notes section. I've recently been getting questions about how to use these different areas and what the difference is between them. So I'm going to explain that real quick. So Para normally has these different modules in it. Projects, Areas, Resources, and Archives. In general, there's a kind of flow which is going on, which is you will create projects, you have stuff to do, and what comes out of those projects might be an artifact or uh, some kind of deliverable. That might be a resource which you want to keep for the future. Maybe you build a business process or you create some kind of template um, or a graphic and a PDF and you want to keep them somewhere. They're going to pop out into the resources area. So this is where I keep things that have kind of been birthed from um, projects. So this may include certain um, like templates. Maybe there's a marketing plan template you want to keep hold of and you're going to need to use at a later date. Um, maybe you've just got like a resource which is a list of all marketing channels ever existing ever. Um, and I just keep this as something which I'm uses a module um, of something bigger so I can bundle together um, these resources uh, to string together new projects. So that's one way in which I use them. There's other things here like templates for press kits, all the other good stuff, and as well as business processes. Um, I'll just try and find one where is a decent process. Da, 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 da. Let's look for validation process. There we go. Yeah, cool. Do these things step by step. Um, and I can pass this to someone else and, and it increases the shareability of my notes uh, and allows my team to kind of come together around shared resources, um, which we're constantly updating. So that's the relationship between projects and resources. Resources are kind of these packets which you can spin together and use them in different projects um, and share them around. So the other kind of distinction to make is between the Knowledge Hub, um, the notes, and the resources. I'll start with the Knowledge Hub. So the Knowledge Hub is kind of the top of the funnel. It's where all of the information that you're getting um, is coming in, mainly for me, from uh, Chrome, so or my browser, wherever I am on the internet, um, if I see something that I like, I'll use the Notion Web Clipper. So let's say I go to a Medium article. Um, let's go to something from Human Systems, and I find this interesting. What I'm going to do is uh, want to store it to read later or do something with. So I'll click it on here in my Notion Clipper and I'll save that to the Knowledge Hub. Once it's in the Knowledge Hub, there's a bunch of stuff that I could do. Um, so let's pick uh, duh, 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 these meditations on Monop. So I need to tell myself what area that's in that's in social system redesign. And it could go anywhere from here, right? I might want to take this and use it in a project, uh, in which case I'm going to like point to which project it's going to live in. And, or I'm going to actually start taking notes about this. So this is where it starts to move away from the Knowledge Hub and become part of notes. So if I'm reading this, this article, which has been clipped into here, 
I can say, oh, this was great. Like, I, I just want that. Um, and I'll take it over to my notes section. So I'll take this note or what I've pulled from the Knowledge Hub and then I'll put it in here, I'll call it a uh, thing I grab. And this kind of allows my thought to be very modular and findable. And if I tag it correctly, I can always come back to it. Um, and then I can also just make the distinction between like, oh, I, I found this from the meditations. So I know what it's related to um, in the knowledge hub. So it doesn't just float as some kind of information which no one knows where that came from. Um, so I'm building these relationships. And this is where the distinction between the notes and the knowledge hub starts to come in. My notes have a different, well, multiple sources of uh, input. A major one that I use is uh, TextGrabber, which is an app on my phone, and I will we'll leave a link to a video in the description. Um, basically, I use this to, when I'm reading books and I like a paragraph that I see, I can take a photo and it converts it into text. I then put that into Notion and it becomes a note. So an example of this um, is probably this. Yeah, great. So this was clipped from using this app. It's just a small bit from a book. And this is a note that I wanted to keep. Um, and the main thing that's going on here in notes is that, which is different to the Knowledge Hub, is that my notes are very alive. I'll keep coming back to them and trying to, uh, if they're relevant for any projects or thinking that I'm doing right now, I'll change the status of them um, from level one and be slowly trying to move towards level five. Um, these levels are part of a process uh, called progressive summarization, which I'll do a whole nother video on. Um, but it's basically a way of extracting the best bits out from your notes. So just to recap again, stuff's coming in from my knowledge hub um, from the web, um, or things are going into my notes through my phone, either via the, via the app text grabber or me just thinking in the moment, oh, I need to write something. And then I'll hit a new note on my phone and write that. Um, my resources is more like a um, repository of the things which feel more uh, solidified, as if they're kind of read, almost ready to pass on to people. I'm not saying all of them are ready to pass on to people. Um, in fact, I've actually got a status tab which tells me uh, what level this resource is at. Is it in a kind of research phase? Is it summarized? Is it ready to publish or is it just private? Does it need some more work? Um, and if it's ready to publish, it appears on my public facing website um, as kind of ready to look at and people can see that. Um, and that's just a link to the same database here. So I hope that's clear. In the top, Knowledge Hub, in from me, all the real world, notes, and resources is more of a solidified place where you start passing stuff around. Hope that's helpful, and I'll see you next episode.